We are super excited to share about our trip to Iceland in July of 2023. Since 2012, we've traveled and learned. Our channel offers two videos per trip, a travel vlog, and the other insights. Join us and be smart, joyful travelers. On July 10th of 2023, the Littlehuter volcano started erupting, and by July 20th, we were on a 12-hour flight to Iceland. We stayed at an Airbnb just a mile or two from the Keflavik airport. We arrived at 7 a.m. on Friday morning, and by 4 p.m. that afternoon, after a brief nap, we were on a 26-minute drive to get to the parking lot. In that short drive, we were able to see the moss-covered lava from a thousand years ago, the pine trees, beautiful flowers, and the neighborhoods. We were ready to go on the six-mile hike that took us three hours. I put this on a trail map just to check it out, and even though there was only an 800-foot overall elevation gain, our actual ascent hills that we climbed out and back was 4,200 feet. And we're off. This was the first hill, and it became very difficult. You can see the switchbacks there. They were very steep. It was a challenging hike, and I'm so glad I got ankle supports for myself. The trail was varied between a dirt path and fully rocks, or a mix of both dirt and rocks. You can see from this video here that I took of what the terrain was like. in front of the previous year's volcano. It was so interesting to see how far the lava had gone and how close to the path and that people were able to walk on it and go right up to it. 3.5 kilometers to go and no active volcano in sight. In the last week, they had quickly put together a path to the volcano and it was very rough. When we had been watching reports about this prior to coming, we had heard and seen references to the moss fire, so it was interesting to see how that looked. After walking six miles and 21,000 steps, we crested the last hill and saw the volcano. It was a magical experience. It was about 7.45 at night when we arrived, and you can still see how light it was. The sound of the volcano was indescribable. On the right hand side, you can see the path we arrived on, and to the left is the path of where we went to go sit. This was the last hill we had to walk up gratefully, but the scene before us was so breathtaking that it was simple and easy, and we quickly found somewhere to sit. From this drone footage that we have permission to use, you can actually see us. We're in the black jacket and the pink jacket sitting next to each other. Amazing that we were able to get access to this footage. We're all set up and ready for the experience. We had brought five, technically five, cameras with us, two iPhones, an Olympus DSLR, a Canon point-and-shoot, and a camcorder. It was breathtaking to watch the volcano erupt and to have it drain out into what looked like a lake and then down into a river with falls. And what was so interesting is that it changed all night long. We had heard that the lava cone was about 90 meters and to have the lava spew so high above was incredible. This drone footage shows the amazing scene before us and it changed all night long. We were able to get some photos and video that will help us remember this experience for as long as we live. This drone footage shows the extents of the volcano site. The hill behind the crater is where we were sitting halfway down the hill. The drone operator was actually at the summit. And all of the lava that you see here was provided by this 2023 eruption site. It started out as multiple fissures and then condensed into just one active fissure that was creating this caldera cone, lava cone, if you will 
and the smoke that we're flying through right now is composed of CO2 and sulfur dioxide. From this angle, you can just see how full the lava lake was inside the crater. As we say goodbye to the crater, it's time to say hello to the Lava River. The Lava River itself was so mesmerizing to watch. It seemed to change minute by minute. And I'm showing you different video footage we took throughout the night on our different cameras that we had with us. We were physically at the site from 7.45 until 11.45. And we watched the Lava River itself change. The rocks that you see there and the center one that you see there were completely overcome by lava by later in the evening. Just the swirling and the whirling of the river was just amazing. As I said, it was just mesmerizing to watch it. And we called this the first lava falls. There were several lava falls, but this was what we considered to be the first of the lava falls. The next video clip you're going to see shows a sped up version of what we saw over about 20 minutes. You can see how easily that this is flowing along with the orange sides. Now this is the sped up portion where the lava is actually rising in the river channel, if you will, and spreading out over the previously cooled lava. You can see how over full it is and how it creates additional pressure and moves the solidified lava and creates calvings. The lava river changed in height throughout the night, so as a result of that, we were able to see these bright orange walls at times, and it was just absolutely stunning. This is another example of a calving section. You can see there was no pressure from above, but an entire section just rolls right into the lava. Some more drone footage to share with you of how beautiful this volcano was on July 21st, 2023. And I say the date because it changed by the day. It's now time to say goodbye to the spot that we had on the hill. This is the last photo with us, the last photo of the volcano and the last video of the volcano that we took. And you can see just how perceptively far away we were, but we felt so close. Just to the south of the hill was a place that people called the Bottomless Valley. It was a place where we could have an up close and personal experience with the lava and it was hot. We could even feel the heat from here. We decided to be safe and put on our respirators. We felt safe being next to the lava because it was very slow in the way it was moving. It looked very thick and pushing through the crust. You could see it moving slowly, little by little. Our thumbs got very hot standing that close. It's time to say goodnight to the lava field. It was about 12.45 a.m. This footage is from the summit. You can see us going up the hill. Time for the hike back. I decided to take a 360 degree video of what it looked like at 12.45 at night. You can see how light it is still. We didn't need to use our headlamps or our flashlights that we had brought. The beautiful um, pink is from the volcano itself, and you can see the trail and the surroundings. The night sky was just tremendous with the glow of the volcano, even from 3.5 kilometers away. One last look at fountaining lava. We walked back six miles in three hours. Now for some well-earned rest and relaxation. We enjoyed the Blue Lagoon, which was actually on the way to the volcano. We enjoyed it the following night though, on Saturday the 22nd. And this is a 360 degree video of the Blue Lagoon itself. It is a hydro plant, 
a power plant, I believe, and this is its wastewater and it has silica um, in it and it makes it very soft and blue and absolutely beautiful. They heat it geothermally uh, from 2,000 feet down and it was about 100 to 104 degrees, I think. And there we are with the silica masks on. So much fun. Thank you for joining us on our volcano journey. See you on the next trip.